How is it going you guys? Steven from Break Free Homestead. We're gonna frame this room in the basement out. It's gonna be an office. We have some concrete that we have uh, sealed with some UGL. And then uh, we have our obviously our, our stick frame here. And then we're gonna continue that, get that all done. And then we'll move on to the next project, electric. Insulation, drywall. We're gonna do the ceiling, tongue and groove. So, if this content helps you guys out at all, would you please drop down below, hit that like and subscribe button. We'd love to grow with you. So the first step in this project here is we have a landing here at the bottom of our stairs. What we're gonna do is chop this down. That way a door can open and it's uh, the same height. You're not stepping right up out of a door. Uh, we do have to make a little step out of this. So there will be an additional step in this framing, but we're gonna cut most of it out. So there'll be like a little platform down here, a little bit smaller on the concrete, but it's gonna be the right way. Don't worry about it. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna measure out our step and it's gonna be just shy of 11 inches. We're gonna mark that out here and we'll probably have to cap it. So we'll go uh, an inch and a half back. So we'll go nine and a quarter and nine and a quarter here. So I'm cutting this one a little bit shy because when we expose these lateral two by eights or whatever, um, it's gonna be open, so we need to put a cap on it. Add that inch and a half. We have some new surface uh, stuff we can put on. So let's get this cut. You're a wild girl. How was school? Good. Good. We just got this base out, got that new step in. I don't have a two by 12, so I just used some three quarter uh, ply for now. Eventually I'll replace that when we do something else with this, but this was overhanging over here. I just brought it all the way back, just in case we do uh, eventually close this in or whatever, put a door here. Uh, I could just continue that wall framing right there. So yeah, looks pretty nice, even consistent. Might be a little bit higher. Uh, just because the thickness of this material versus this. Before we start framing, I'm gonna throw up some spray foam in these rim joists bays here. I got a 200 pack, which should do most of the house. I'm not gonna show you the whole thing, but yeah, let's get this done so we can get these walls up. All right, guys, so I'm gonna take some measurements right now uh, for our walls. This is gonna be to the top, and then we're just gonna use the existing uh, framing here for the drywall. So we're gonna cut it off here and then uh, bring it down and then we're gonna have a partial wall on this small area over here. Same piece, we have a 16 foot bottom, um, bottom pressure treated plate and then the top, we just got a 10 foot because it's a nine foot section here. 
That way, you know, you're optimizing your wood. All right, 16 inch on center uh, spacing. We're gonna secure them into the ground or into the, your foundation with some Tapcon fasteners. Uh, you just have to make sure you pre-drill those, obviously. You have to have a drill good enough to do that. My uh, Metabo has a hammer drill function and it does the job. So that's what we're gonna use. Top is gonna be secured with just standard nails. You could throw some uh, heavy duty fasteners in there if you want to. This is not structural. It's better to have a tiny little gap on top uh, for you to slide it in there than fight that thing all the way in. You get that wall framed up and it is an eighth of an inch, quarter inch too much. You're gonna be kicking yourself in the butt. It's a pain in the butt to pull all those nails, cut it down. So, uh, or you end up ripping the top plate uh, just a tiny bit. But yeah, it's still a lot of work. So make sure, give you a little gap on the top. It'll work out fine. All right, so I'm gonna take some measurements, make my cuts outside, toss it through the window, and we'll assemble that wall in here, get that thing put up. So what I was doing there, measuring from the top down with the laser, just making sure that one of these um, <clears throat> joists wasn't a lot lower than the rest of them, uh, and you get snagged on that one. So just checked a few of them, and they're pretty consistent, so that's what we're gonna go with. All right, guys, so I'm gonna try to go in quick here. Um, got some things to do. I'll drop a link over here. I'll show you how to frame uh, walls. It's gonna be the same principle. They're just two by six, or this is two by four instead of two by six. Uh, this is non-load bearing, and uh, yeah, there's no windows, no jack studs, nothing like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna frame this thing out right here. Should be enough room, in theory. Just make sure your boards are flush. You can uh, crown your boards. All right, so if you don't know about crowning, uh, you look at your board and you can look down and it's bowing out, like cupping like this. A lot more exaggerated right there but you'll see a slight uh, crown on every board some will be a lot some will be almost nothing and it doesn't really matter too much just make sure they all go in the same way so your wall is not wavy we're going crown down for this so uh, let's continue so our measurements uh, were about 91 to the joist from the floor you know so you just subtract 3 and then 87 uh, is going to be your stud length, and then you sandwich them together and get a wall. Let's see what. All right guys, so I'm gonna frame the second wall here. It's just gonna be this 36 inch one across here uh, to meet up with there and so this workspace is not large enough for me to frame it sideways since we're tucking it behind that wall. Uh, so what we're gonna do is build it here diagonally and I'm just gonna crank it right in there. Um, I'll show you what a condo corner is or what I was taught as a condo corner. There's probably a bunch of different names for it but basically it's so you don't trap your corner and make a dead uh, zone for insulation. So um, yeah, let's get right to it. Should go pretty quick. I already have my studs marked out and uh, everything pre-cut.
All right, guys, a couple minutes, we got that done. Uh, let's show you what we have here. We started from 16 over here. Um, and then, you know, 16 on center, all the way down. Last one's gonna be off most of the time. Most of the time. And this is gonna be the condo corner. Instead of putting a second stud sideways here uh, to match up with that for drywall, because you need a backer for the drywall, we went with the condo corner. Just turn sideways. It's not, you know, anything crazy. It's just for the drywall to secure into. Because if you don't, it's gonna be floating and it's not gonna work out. So this will cover the drywall gap. We'll see if this fits in there. Should be nice and snug. like a glove guys check that out walls are up we have to secure them though uh let me show you the condo corner when it's installed so here it is this will be pushed back and then see how we have that seam here that'll be perfect for mounting the drywall to that let me show you for instance on this side where we just installed this on this other wall there's nothing here so this drywall is going to be floating uh, what i'm going to do is just pop a couple two by fours or one two by four uh, and let it hang off of here. That way your drywall has somewhere to mount. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna secure these studs to the ground in this concrete foundation. We're just gonna be using this masonry bit. Um, I'm gonna start drilling through the wood with a regular bit and then this through the concrete. I feel like it dulls this pretty quick if you just drill through the wood, which it does, but uh, you don't get too far on your bit, or at least I didn't. So we have about, I think the three and a half inch screws here. Um, obviously these are masonry screws for this purpose. Um, these walls are pinned to other wood in this. If your wall was freestanding, I would say use a good amount of these. Um, but probably two or three on each wall, probably three on each wall is going to be more than sufficient. This thing won't go anywhere. We're also going to secure top, um, at an angle on probably two on the top over here just because it's not tied into the uh, roof up here. First thing I'm gonna do is just drill where I want these um, and then we'll come back with the masonry bit and hit it up. All right, we got this bad Larry on the hammer drill. Make sure our wood is nice and secure up to the wall, which this is already tacked in, so it's fine. <laughs> Like I said, those bits go quick. I just replaced the bit and got that drilled. You'll sit there and you won't go anywhere. That's when you know you need a new bit. Bam, sink it down. Doesn't have to go exactly to it. It's not gonna go anywhere like this. So I'm gonna get the rest of these done and I'll see you when we're done. All right, so right now I'm gonna frame up this doorway. An issue we have here, why I got rid of this step or this whole landing basically is because we want it to be a normal transition from door uh, doorway and you don't want to trip over yourself. And now I thought about going down to a 28 inch door. Um, we decided we're going to go with a 30 and basically this will stick out a tiny bit in the doorway, but it will give us that additional room up top. If we want to move a sleeper sofa in here, you make a small door, you're not going to get any furniture in here. Uh, it's going to suck. Hopefully I don't kick that. That would not be good. Uh, but the handing, it's going to be a left hand open in like that so it'll be it'll be fine uh so let's get this frame out we just got to do um we're gonna extend the base plate one vertical um obviously we're putting a top plate there and then it's gonna be one two by across we might do a support in there for drywall but let's get to it
Let's freaking go, you guys. I just threw another anchor in this bottom part over here that we extended on this frame. Our door is all set for our 30 by 80 door. Framing is all done. On to the next step, which is going to be electrical. We have a shop over here. It's ran from a separate circuit, so we're just gonna pull right off this. We're not gonna be drawing that much power here. We don't use this all the time. Nothing's continuously running, so it'll be perfect for these additional outlets and a few lights. Really not gonna be that much. If this helped you guys out at all, please drop down below, hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure you check out this playlist for our basement build. All right, thank you guys.